is our, our baby that we started with. And so I'm going to start at the bottom and at the top because that will help the mulch go away quickly. If you try to start in the middle, the mulch has no place to go. So. Now this is a regular hose, not a big special hose, and we got a $5 nozzle. But we got a really concentrated nozzle that you can get at any Home Depot. And that's what you want to do to get that really good And I'm gonna stop and you can come up here and look at the top now and see what does this tree look like underneath. Now, if you were just sticking that in the ground, this piece here is wrapped around the tree and is gonna strangle that tree. That is not gonna work. So we're gonna to have to go down quite a ways to get this cleaned up. Again, we're going to keep it wet. There's actually a technique to get this done faster. You notice I'm moving the water really quickly. I'm moving it down kind of like I'm scraping it with a spatula, only I'm using the hose like a spatula. Until we can see what's under there, we won't know what we've got. But we do know we've got a good tree because there's lots and lots of roots. It's just they're maybe not in the right place. And if they're not in the right place, it's not going to help us. So let's uh, turn this around again, if you can, Frank, just so that you can see that side. So there, certainly, we've got a problem. And we're going to take it over to a bucket now. I think we'll take it right there. Can you carry it? Yeah. Okay, take it easy, and we'll see what we can do. So what we're going to do is we're looking for the collar first. We know it's down three or four inches. We go ahead, cut through this. So they, the, the growers put too much osmocote. osmocote, which is a high nitrogen fertilizer on see these the trees. Green. That's the osmocote. That's a slow See the release right yeah. there. Fertilizer. Slow Feeds release the fertilizer. Yeah. Slow release what fertilizer. It does yeah. Is that it sends the roots crazy going for the nitrogen. Phosphorus and Once we get in and find the collar, then it starts to get a lot easier. But until we do, it's really important that glove finger right there does a lot of scraping. I wear a glove out almost every time we do this. But what I'm saying is, is having that one thing is I keep scraping in here. Frank's using that. You can do that, but you have to be careful that yeah, you don't yeah. damage the tree. Yeah. Whereas I use just a glove hand. <laughs> and then here I found, we've already found a girdle and we found another girdle. We're, yeah. we're finding girdles underneath here because this poor you tree. see where we're trying to get. That's the buttress root. That's what we're trying to get. We want this dirt to be right there, so we're going to end up cutting all down. this stuff that's... So we started up here, so we're going down five or six inches. We don't want that tree. Remember I said every inch of soil, or every, and every time you plant a tree too deep, every inch reduces the oxygen by 10%. Well, reducing the oxygen by 50% isn't going to work. Okay, Frank, let's take that one thing off. Yeah. That'll help a lot, just getting this off. So at one point, this tree was in a smaller pot, and this root turned at that point, probably when it was a one-gallon pot. It turned a long time ago. We can't leave this here uh -uh. because it's going to be a problem. So we're going to turn. Once it turns, it always turns, so we have to go before the turn, and we have to prune it. This is going to not be good for the tree as far as it would be better if it wasn't cut, but at the same time, if we leave it, it's, a no, it's an absolute junk tree. So we're going to go ahead and take that off. 
And so over here, this was another girdle. This Which was, limits the life of the tree. Yeah, of course. until the tree gets too big for the, the girdle's gonna kill the tree. So the girdle's gonna be this big around eventually. And the girdle's here, and the tree's growing into it, it just strangles it. You get strangled by your own, your own self, is what you do. And what we want to do is be able to put our finger all the way through one side. And we call it that quartering. So that we don't have any girdles there. And then when we get that side, we're good here. Now we've got to do it on the other side. We've got to come over here. Let's turn the tree, Frank, a little bit. This way. Ready? Uh, just, yeah, let him see this side now. Okay, so just put it straight up again. There we go. So now we're going to do the same on this side. We're going to find this, and you can see this tree was really, really not planted correctly when they, what they call it, upsize, when they went from a one-gallon tree to maybe a three-gallon or a five-gallon tree. They should have checked for girdles, but they didn't. Very poor quality. But we can fix that with doing what we're doing. Now you can see I can't get my finger through there, so I'm going to cut. Still can't get my fingers through there. I cut again, and finally I can. I can get my fingers through there, and that way I know there's no girdles in there. And I can cut all the way straight down. And then I see this, I come in here, and all of a sudden I got another girdle right there. So eventually I've got to get rid of that guy. If you start with a smaller tree, you have less roots to deal with, you have less growth to deal with, and you're going to have a healthier tree. Don't just get this tree from the nursery and stick it in the ground and hope for the best, because the best isn't going to be good for that tree in another 10 years. You're going to have a dead tree, and now you're going to have a big dead tree. And you've put all that energy and work into a tree. Just when you expect it to sequester uh, carbon, and suddenly it dies, so. The other thing that you have to think about is, if you plant a tree this size, and you plant a tree, a three gallon tree, or you plant a one gallon tree, in five years, they'll all be the same size. Because it's all about the roots. We're cutting these roots. These roots never had a chance to grow beyond this tree. If you have a five, three gallon tree, it's about balanced already. So you put that tree in the ground, it's ready to go. The one gallon tree probably has to put more roots on, but this guy is gonna be ready to go if it's a three gallon tree. This guy's gonna sit there for a year, maybe a year, two, maybe two years, because he doesn't have enough roots to support the canopy. And it's gotta be balanced all the time. Okay, he's gonna wash this some more. Okay, so we're going to open this up in the bottom. Again, it's not important on the bottom, but what we need to do is have those roots get loosened up. There we go. That little tree is going to be so happy to be, because that's all this old mulch in there. I have the tree. And this guy's got to come off too. Sometimes we just don't know if it's going to make it, wow. but what we do is we'll take a picture. Yep. And then, so this guy, we don't want to take it away. It's going away. Yeah. But then How about it's right here. Yeah, I think that'd be right good. That joint. Yeah. So then it's going away enough See? that it, it won't girdle because otherwise it's because coming back. It's starting to go around. As long as it goes straight out, it's fine. But once he starts curling, when you buy a bald and burlap tree. They cut off 90 to 95 percent of the roots, and the tree does fine. So why is that? Well, tree roots grow very fast. Uh, one year I did an experiment with a bunch of red buds, and I put them in, in the ground just for the one-gallon trees, and I let them go for the whole summer, and they grew 20 feet across the yard in one summer. They went looking for water, and that's what trees are going to do. So if you have a tree that you're putting in and you're not sure it's going to make it, 
The main thing is to give it enough water that it's going to be able to survive and grow its own roots. Now what does that mean, enough water? Well, a tree can look like it's stressed if it doesn't have enough water, and it can look like it's stressed if it has too much water. If it's drowning, or if it's drying out. And the only way to tell, truly, is to use a moisture meter. It's a $10 tool that is absolutely essential for any gardener, for all of your plants. What you want to do with watering a tree is to make sure it gets enough water to force it to go out looking for more. So once a week watering is best. 20 gallons for a 15 gallon tree would be best. Slow release, we put a bag on our trees. And then we wait a week and then we check it again. If it's below half, then we'll water again. But if it's not, we'll make that tree work to get some more water because it will push out more and more roots. And that's what you want to do. You want to force that tree to work for those roots and work for that water. But never, never, never water a tree every day because it's a little water pig. It'll just sit there and slurp up that water every day and it won't grow any roots. You know, that's actually the same for anybody doing grass. A lot of people water their grass every day. It's the worst thing to do. You want to force your tree and your grass and your plants to create roots to reach. and to reach. And the more roots, the healthier your tree.